All right, we're going to start with prayer. Father, thank you for our morning. Thank you for the privilege we have to wake up, to have a bed to sleep in when other people have to sleep on the ground or in trailers or tents. Thank you that we have food to eat, water to drink, a shower with warm water. Thank you that we have a church, a family that uh, meets to worship you and loves you. Yes. Thank you for your word that's alive to our feet, alive to our path. And today, may there be a sweet aroma that arises from this place as children throughout the world worship you, your children. We love you. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus, our Savior, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We know that as Christ followers, that when we die, because we love Jesus, there is a better picture for us. Yay. There is better light. There, this is not... This is not our best life, is it? No. It's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be. We have sin that we have to deal with. When we take our last breath and end up in eternity, we're going to have any sin. So, so we've been talking about our country. We've been talking about um, different things. We've been talking about our founders. We've been talking about um, what's happened. We've learned. We've understood. Um, you know, those of you who are alert and aware of what's going on within our country, we understand that there is some that would say our country is an evil country. This is an evil country. This is a bad country. This is a systemic racist country. This is a country that needs to pay reparations to all the people throughout the world for all the bad things that they've done. And for you to live in this country, you're bad. I don't know where that comes from other than the enemy, because this is not a bad country. This is the only country in the world that people strive to come to, because this is the place where they can experience freedom and opportunity and privilege like they cannot experience any other place. I actually listened to a gentleman this week who is a Muslim, doesn't love Jesus, but loves this country. In fact, he loves his country so much that he joined the military to serve and protect the freedom of this country because he understands as a Muslim in all other countries of the world, he can't express if he has different views or different ideas from the regular Muslim belief. And he's what is called a reformed Muslim, which doesn't believe in jihad and doesn't believe in some of the things that, you know, the radical Muslims believe in, and he says, that's why I love this country. But there are people that don't understand that, and they hate this country, but they don't understand that when they say they hate this country, that's a privilege that they can say. Because in another country, if you said that, you'd disappear, and you'd be gone. <laughs> so we are privileged to live in this country. Founders of this country did some amazing things as they put together this privilege that we have. We talked about where we are today, what's going on in the world around us. We talked about social justice. We talked a little bit about Black Lives Matter and how those are infiltrating the picture. This week, again, we saw some things that we said, oh my goodness. Um, there was another shooting. That shooting happened in Wisconsin. And we saw the shooting, didn't we? What we didn't see much of was everything that happened before right. the shooting. Which, when you don't see the whole picture, you go, I mean, when I just saw the bum, 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 you know, I go, oh, that, can you believe that that happened? What I didn't see was that before, as the police arrived, they tried to subdue this gentleman by tackling him on the ground. And he got up. They then tried to taser him. He then got up, went to his car, known felon, known gun possessor, known rapist. And so as he goes to his car, what are the police supposed to do? Say, please, 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 you know, we beg you, don't do that, just obey us. Well, they've used their first source, which is what? Trying to wrestle him to the ground. They use their second source, which is a non-lethal source, which is a taser. Neither one of those and he still continues to do what they ask him not to do. And what's their last source? 
A gun. So, we, we see all this. And then we hear, oh, it's, it's the police. They are so bad and they're so evil. And then we see people protesting and burning things down again, and et cetera, et cetera. We see athletes saying, I'm going to not... I'm not going to play a game. Okay. Now, the question we all have in this picture is what we've been learning is, is this movement going to benefit our country? No. What we, where we've been, where we go. We've seen a lot of things happen. As Christ followers, we have to respond biblically, not just emotionally or politically. And that's why we are looking at these pictures to say, what do we do and how do we respond to people who are living like this? We know sinners, we expect them to respond sinfully, but Christ followers, we expect them to respond biblically. So when Christ followers do not respond biblically, that's where the problem comes because we have to deal with problems within the body of Christ not where God wants us. He doesn't want division there, but that's what the enemy wants. So that's why it's important for you to understand what is biblical and how to respond biblically. We are going to finish watching the last part of Pastor Jeff Durbin's message, and then we're going to begin to look at what the Bible says about social justice and the gospel. We're actually going to begin to look up some important verses. But before we do, Donald Trump is not the answer. No. No. Joe Biden is not the answer. Jesus is the answer. Okay? Jesus is the answer. The only way that culture will be changed is one by one as people their heart changes when they put their faith and trust in jesus no political agenda will change the way people are it's jesus who does that and that's important for us to remember as we walk through our discussions and we talk about the left the right the moderate the radical the communist the socialist the you know constitutionalists Whoever it is, those are not the answers. Jesus is the answer. Yet within those realities, there is a way that is much more biblical than the other ways, which is why we're looking at the picture. So we're going to finish listening to Pastor Durbin, and then we're... What's his name again? Jeff Durbin. How do you spell the last name? D U R B I N. S. D U R B I N. Where is he coming from? He's from, I think, Tempe, Arizona, is where his church is. I like him. He uh, he used. I can't say used to be. 
He is a martial arts expert. So very much, he's been in movies and different things like that, you know, with, because of his martial art expertise. So very much um, with that kind of a thought pattern of, yeah, you know, so he's, he has that thought pattern with Christianity. You know, this is an offense, you know, we're gonna take it to people, I'm not afraid, I'm not worried, I'm not, dis you know, I'm not gonna be quiet. Um, so, he's, he's pretty on, on target with a lot of things. But they go out to like abortion clinics and talk to people, um, go out to protest, Black Lives Matters, protest, talk to people, um, you know, just right there, you know, cutting edge kind of stuff, so. I like what he says and what he does. So let's let's think about where where we finish. He started talking again about um, the state becoming God. Okay, the state being the ultimate. And as Christ followers, we know that God is the ultimate. That Jesus is the King. And be prepared to make a decision who's your ultimate who's who are you going to serve and how are you going to to serve in that way so we're kind of we're beginning to head in that direction when you look at what goes on in culture around you and what authority is beginning to say especially in the state of California the state that we live in how is the state of California saying or telling Christ followers what they should be doing? We're heard about this. Staying home. John? No singing in church. No singing in church. No attending okay. church. No attending church. You will be fine if you go to church. No large groups. Okay, well, let's think about those things and say, all right, is there a point when a Christ follower says, who's my ultimate, okay? Who do I obey in the picture? There comes a point, isn't there? Yeah. When, and we really haven't seen a whole lot of that in the United States of America when it comes to the government telling the church what they will and will not do. Especially, as I said, in the state of California, because what you see in the state of California compared to other states in our country is there are people, pastors, that are being pursued by the state legally and fined. Congregations are being threatened with fines and imprisonment in the state of California and the state is following through on those pictures. So we're beginning to see those simple things starting to happen to the body of Christ. Could it go farther? Sure. Could. Well, we know that as we look at the Bible, that what happens in future is that you as a Christ follower or Christ followers who are on this planet will come up with a ultimate decision eventually. And the ultimate decision is, will you worship God or will you worship the Antichrist or the state, whoever it is that is in that position of authority? Because that's where history is headed. And, you know, not that Jesus is coming back today or tomorrow, but we're getting closer, aren't we? closer to that moment in time. So, thinking about this picture, as a Christ follower, we have to make a decision who are we going to serve? And how are we going to do that? How are we going to stand up? Um, I mean, illustration with you being here today at First Baptist Church is part of that picture. Because according to the state of California, you can't be doing what we're doing here today. But you're doing it. Okay? And there are some people that won't do that because they can't step across that bridge. But 
what does the Bible say? We always want to pour things through the Bible and say, when and where do we need to make those stands, not only corporately, but individually? So that's why we're crossing these bridges today. And bridges that you have to ask, not only corporately, but individually with the people that you talk to, how you talk to them. Because it's so important that as Christ followers that we're not quiet about Jesus being the answer. Okay? Give me some of your thoughts. What well, you finished hearing? My son is an elder in a big church in Fort Angeles, Washington. And they have uh, medical doctors and dentists in that congregation on the elder board. They had an elders retreat, which I haven't been privy yet to find out how that turned out. But it's such a controversy, not in California there, that's in Washington, that there, you know, are we going to be fine with 10 grand, or are we, in a, are we not? It is really, really a problem. And uh, we haven't been hit with that, number one, I think we're lower than 50 people anyway. So we're not really included in that. But when are they, do you know of a church in California who's been fined? I know of two churches that have been fined. Really? Yes. Yeah. John MacArthur has been charged, not fined. Okay. They are, John MacArthur's church has been, there's been restraining orders, threats, but they've gone to court and they have a hearing that's coming up in September that's going to bring it all to a little bit more fruition. But there's. Three other churches in California, one has been fined $6,000 and the pastor and the, um, et cetera. So, yes. Great Lord. Any other thoughts? To me, the stage is like, you're not the boss of me. Jesus is the boss of me. And, and it's true, Jesus is the boss. The state is not the boss. And as Pastor Durbin said, as Christ followers, our job is to obey the state that does its job according to what the Bible says, okay? When the state begins to say to a Christ follower, I am the ultimate and God is not, and crosses that line, that's where the church, the individual, the Christ follower says, no, I'm going to choose to obey my king, my ultimate, not the state. Right, that we can be in church or you know practice religion. Yes, that's, a, that's you know the Second Amendment. Excuse me, the First, First, Amendment. First Amendment. Second Amendment is the guns. Okay, First Amendment, freedom of religion. Okay, but what the government has said at this point in time, Lynn, is except in the case of a pandemic. So we'll take the, we can take things away from you to keep you safe because we're in charge. That's been the thought pattern. And that's where people and Christ followers have said, okay, we are stepping under that authority because, you know, to their understanding, the Bible says to obey the authority over them, which the Bible does say that very clearly, except when it comes to the point of crossing the line when it comes to what the Bible says. And that's the key in that picture. I mean, the state says go 55 miles an hour on the highway. So that doesn't mean, you. oh, the Bible says that I can go faster. <laughs> no, the Bible says obey the state. If you get pulled over by the CHP officer, you obey, you get a ticket, and you go pay the fine, okay? You obey. The Bible says pay your taxes. Give to Caesar that which is Caesar. So you can't say, nope, I'm a Christ follower. I'm not going to pay my taxes. No. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says when there comes a point where the state crosses the line, that as a Christ follower, you have the privilege of saying, I choose to obey God rather than man. But there are many Christ followers who we're already beginning to see who say, uh, I don't know if I can cross that bridge. Okay, I don't know if I can cross that bridge. You know, whether it's Cleo, your son's church, you know, where they're going, ah, I don't know if we 
to do that or or what or you know there's churches here in Amador County that won't meet okay they're you know they'll meet outside or if they have a place where they can't meet outside they try and find some place to do that okay but they won't meet inside okay because they believe that they need to obey what the governor has told them I don't know if they don't say neither you know what they do but you know that's just one of the things that the governor has said there's a 13 page letter that was sent to all of us as pastors that said here's what you need to do and one of those things just you know for your information you, we were told to tell you before you come to church make sure you wash your clothes Whoa. and we were told to tell you make sure when you leave church wash your clothes immediately and put on clean clothes that's a mandate from the governor of the state of California. That's only one in a 13-page list of things that were in this picture. So that just goes to the point when you say, here's what's beginning to happen in the picture when it comes to the state being the ultimate and God being the ultimate. There comes a point when a Christ follower says, and again, we're, we, to a certain extent, in Amador County, are privileged. Yeah. Number one, where is Amador County? Where, where is that? Okay. Oh, that little place over there? Okay, that's number one privilege. Number two, First Baptist who? Oh, First Baptist Church of Jackson? Where is that? Okay. Who cares about First Baptist Church? They're just like tiny, tiny little bit about it. Okay. They're not. You know, Grace Community Church or Calvary Chapel of Costa Mesa or, you know, some of these churches that have, you know, 5, 10, 20,000 people that are attending those churches. So, John? You know, Jesus only had 12 disciples to start with. Just saying. Okay, Jesus had 12 disciples. That's just saying. Wow, we got 14. <laughs> Look what they did. So, Randall? I'm just wondering, uh, since churches are tax exempt, uh, does the state threaten to take away that uh, tax? They don't and, uh, start taxing churches through the nose? Or I haven't heard anything you know, about that. That might that. be a next step. Uh, if well, when you go back in church history, understand this. When you study church history, what you see, here's the order that things go when it comes to persecution of Christ followers. First thing that happens in the persecution of Christ followers is number one, they will tell you to obey the state. When you don't, the first thing they do is they take some of your money, okay? Financial is the first step that's taken, okay? The next thing they do is they take your property, okay? Money, then property, okay? The third thing they do is they send you to prison or jail. The fourth thing they do is they torture you. And the fifth thing that happens is you're then killed. That's church history, what happens, okay? Financially, and we're seeing that already, aren't we? Fine. $10,000, six, you know, whatever it is, as a, as a body. But that fine is also threatened to the individual members that go to the church. It's not just the pastor or the staff, it's those people that attend. So at this church where your son is going, there's this fine that's threatened to them. And that fine, if they follow through, can then be fined to individual members. Why do they do that? Discourage. Yeah, to say, all right, T, you come, you're next in line. And so what happens to T? T goes, oh, 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 okay. I, I'm not gonna do no $10,000 fine. I, I'll stay home and watch online. And what has happened? It's all in the church. The, the growl of the tiger has done its job. Okay, they, again, fear has brought into that picture. But if T says, you know what, T, you're gonna come, and they find you $10,000, and you come again, and you pay the other 10,000 and 20,000, and they go, that's not working. 
Well, I guess we'll just take her property then. T, you keep coming, we're gonna take your property. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, take my property, not mine anyways. God gave it to me. Well, I guess that doesn't work. Guess what? T, you're going to jail. We'll see if that'll change your mind about this Jesus thing. Oh, I'll go to jail. Okay, guess that's not working. So T, you end up in solitary confinement and then some things happen that you're going, oh, this is not just jail, this is torture. And then the next thing is death. That's church history. So that's what's going to happen in the future when it comes to what God has said when the Antichrist comes to the picture, is it comes down to the ultimate decision. Are you going to worship God? Or are you going to worship the state? Are you going to bow down and say, Jesus is Lord? Or are you going to bow down and say, the state is Lord? I don't know. You have to make that decision now. That's key. Now, we may not be alive when that happens because I'm honking 62 years old. Isn't that oh, you're old? old? Yeah, it is. You're old. <laughs> now I may not live to see that, Maybe. but I got to tell you something. A lot's happened in the world six months. in six months. That's right. Mm -hmm. Things that you would never imagine. Can you imagine that the people in the United States, the strong frontier leaders of the world in this country? have quivered and fallen because they're afraid of a little virus. Can you believe that they rolled over because of that? Can you believe the people of the world going, are you kidding me? And if we rolled over that quickly for a little virus, a little fear there, someone says, all right, I'm going to put you in jail. Hey, everybody will do exactly what they want them to do because that's the way the world works. That's the way the enemy works. Because the bottom line of this is to say, we need to get rid of Christ followers. We need to get rid of Christianity because Christianity is the only place that says we will not obey the state because our ultimate is Jesus. Lisa, you were gonna say something? Yeah, you know, what you just explained, the process, sure. mm -hmm. that's what happened in Germany. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, word by word, well, the whole process. And then I, I was too young for it, but it happened. I, I remember my parents talking about it. But then they took the pastors, put them in jail, closed the churches, mm -hmm. and then killed the pastors. One million people were killed. German people, pastors and people were against Hitler. They were killed before the Jews were killed. One million. Yeah. And and it, it was a slow process, but it, it wasn't a slow process. It happened within four years. Right. So it happened quickly for all that to, to go, and Germany was a Christian nation. It was a Christian nation. Exactly. So we can see, back to the verses that we're memorizing. Finally. Be strong in the Lord. Not be strong in the United States of America. Not be strong in the Constitution. Not be strong in your belief of capitalism. But be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God. You know, too many Christ followers have no idea what that means. They memorize the verse and they go, yeah. Okay, I come to church, I, but they are not prepared for battle. They are not prepared to say, this is where I stand, no matter what you say. Because you know why? Because, and I have to look at myself in the mirror when I say this, because we've been too soft. Huh? I mean, we like a hot shower. <laughs> we like a nice warm bed to sleep in. We like food in our refrigerator. We like to go out and get a hamburger when we want. I mean, you're going to take that away? Well, see, you have to make those decisions now. Because as we look in those directions, what did Jesus say? 
He said, if you're going to follow me, you need to what? Take up your cross. Okay? He didn't say, oh, guess what? It's all going to be sweet and easy, and you get to go on vacations and go on a cruise, and life is going to be sweet. No. He said, you need to take up your cross. He said, you know what? If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. Yeah. Team? And, and, um, I find that it's not even the state, it's the people. Uh, like where I work, I, I found, and I'm weak, I find that I'm backing off a little bit because, I mean, it's almost like you could get fired. And, and I think in my brain, you really need this job, so, you know. And, and, that and, was, I can, yeah. and I'm scared. I'm one of those running back on the thing, but I don't want to. But yeah. I'm, what do you do if you don't have a job? Exactly. So that's, things are getting to be that point. We hear that all the time about somebody saying, okay, they said something about all lives matter. And so what happens? They're fired. Okay. What? Okay. So again, the pressure is starting to be applied to people that says, obey or else. Just obey or else. You can be an or else, okay, or you obey. I mean, like we said, in Australia, they're sending around drones to take pictures of people with masks. Why? Because if you're not wearing a mask, what's going to happen? A stormtrooper's going to come down and force you to wear a mask? Could be. We See, we're just living in a crazy world. That's why it's so important for you and I as Christ followers to remember that Jesus is the answer. That's who we rely upon. That's who we trust in. We rely upon him. Hey, the, realize the money that we have is money that God has given us. That's what it is. The house that I have is a house that God has given me, allowed me to live in. I'm a steward of that house. The cars that I drive, okay? Tennis rackets, tennis shoes, the wife that I have, the children, they're all gifts. The Bible says children are a gift from the Lord. The Bible says, you know, a father can give a son an inheritance, but only the Lord gives a good wife. The father says grandchildren are the crown of old men, okay? Blessings, prosperity, that's what we're talking about there. But those are just on loan. Those are only temporary. So, a Christ follower has to make a decision in their life. Is Jesus really number one? Is he really? Or when push comes to shove, do I go, no, I'll, I'll back away and God knows. God knows my heart. I mean, I might say, no, I'm not going to do that. But you know, in my heart, God, that I really would, but I'm not going to because it's going to cost me $10,000. It's going to cost me my house. Or it's going to cost me jail time. Or it's going to cost me whatever. I don't know. So, Christ followers, be strong in the Lord, the strength of his might. Remember, our struggle is not against Gavin Newsom. Our struggle isn't against Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom is a sinner. He's a sinner. That's how sinners act. Sinners are blinded. You know, the enemy's blinded them. They cannot see the truth. They cannot see righteousness. Even though I heard him on a news report saying, I'm Catholic. You know? And one of the Catholic schools was going to open and do everything normal. And they were, you know, had been fined. And, you know, they said they're not going to pay the fine. And one of the news reporters says, well, what are you, what are you going to do? And he goes, well, I'm just disappointed because I'm a Catholic and I know we're supposed to do what God wants us to do and I hope they will be doing what God wants them to do. I thought, oh my goodness. He's a sinner, saved by grace. Yeah. Hopefully God will open his eyes and he can see that, but now he's a sinner. So that's the way he's supposed to act. That's the way he's going to act. Christ followers, we do not follow the way sinners live. We live on a different level because we love Jesus. So we have to make those decisions and decide what we're going to do before those decisions get placed on our lap. So that's our challenge. That's where we're headed, Barbara. Um, when Lisa was talking about Germany and the Jews, it reminded me of a, a quote from Corrie Ten Boom, the lady who wrote The Hiding Place. And it, it goes along with everything we're talking about. If, if you look at the world 
you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. But if you look at God, you'll be at rest. Wow, well, that's a good quote. Good quote. From somebody who experienced all the things that we're talking about. Yeah. Okay, who experienced that. So, I'm just going to keep encouraging us to stay strong in the Lord, the strength of his might, to follow God's word, to listen to what God says, to obey him, to build up our own strength, and that strength comes from the word of God and spending time with God. It's the only way you're going to get stronger spiritually. It's not going to happen. You can say you love tennis, but if you're not out practicing on the tennis court, you're not going to get better. You're not putting in the time, so it doesn't matter. You can say you love Jesus, but if you're not memorizing his word, if you're not reading his word, if you're not spending time with him, then it's not going to matter. Because when the pressure comes and the match is on the line, you're going to crumble and fall. And that's not what I want for anybody that's in this family, that they would be strong in the Lord and the strength of his mind. Let's pray. Father, thank you for our morning. Thank you for your love for us. As we look at the craziness in the world around us, we want to be founded on your word, realizing that your word is the lamp into our feet and light into our path. We have hope beyond what we see around us. And that hope is because Jesus has saved us, because we have been chosen before the foundation of the earth. We've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And we have hope that there is more to life than these few short years that we live. Keep us strong in you, the strength of your might. Be salt and light of the world that we live in. We love you, praise in the powerful name of Jesus, our Savior, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You guys have a great, great rest of the day. We're going to have some good time in God's Word in just a little bit, so we'll see you in a little while.